Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Terry, and I'm the Executive Director of the Youth Climate Report. I'm very, very pleased to be with you today uh, in honor of being recognized by the Sustainable Development Goals Action Awards. Uh, it's a great honor for, um, for everybody uh, involved with the Youth Climate Report. And, um, and we're going to be looking at some of the films that comprise this unique project. And we're also going to meet some of the filmmakers that, uh, that brought us these amazing films. So um, without um, uh, talking too much about the project that you're already familiar with, I'm sure, uh, why don't we meet some of these filmmakers? I, I'm very, very fortunate and, and happy to, to bring some of the, the newer filmmakers um, from all over the globe, actually. Um, the first one is Ariel Lute, and she's an indigenous filmmaker from Tukti Yuktuk, and that's um, an Inuit community in the Northwest Territories of Canada. And she worked with her team known as Tuck TV uh, to put together a, a very special film called Happening to Us that focuses on a very real problem affecting the coastal communities uh, on the Arctic Ocean, and that's uh, soil erosion. So um, um, I'm going to just uh, introduce Ariel and let her say hi and, and tell us a little, little bit more about herself in this project. Hello, my name is Ariel Liu of Happening to Us, and I would like to say a huge thank you to CDG Action Awards for recognizing the Youth Climate Report. Going to the COP25 last year was such an amazing and awesome experience, and it was such a blessing to have learned so much while we were there. It was also an honor to be able to show our little film to so many smart, resilient people. We made this film as a project to show what is happening to our little community on the coast of the Arctic Ocean and to get more eyes to see how our land is vanishing and going to COP25 and showing our film there was such an amazing place to do that. Uh, I think that more youth should be involved in activities like this because as our job as young people we need to be thinking about our future and the future of our kids and so forth. Thank you so much. Noticed any changes? Since well, there's the... been a lot of changes. We could lay trees up in the fall, like we used to travel, uh, start driving dogs over the ice in the middle of uh, September. In October, we used to build igloos. Every year is it's different. Like it can get can it can get warm or it can get very cold. The water has, the water sea level has rised a little bit ever since I was 13. Like I looked at the ocean sometimes when I was 13, 14, 15 to 19, water level has been getting higher and higher. Well, I've noticed that there is less beach to walk on and there's a lot of <laughs> permafrost melting. You can see here, there's a lot of erosion happening. At that time, the shoreline was way out and I had no problem driving the vehicle over and behind my house. Um, but, uh, but now, in 2015, um, three storms took most of it, took close to about 20 feet off of it. And then uh, and it's just been getting worse and worse ever since. Those are things that I go to bed worrying about, whether or not there are going to be char in 40 or 50 years in Nunatibu, or 
what's going to happen to our caribou. And these are all linked to climate change. And so that's what really drives me to work on behalf of this issue. Well, I just think that kids should be very aware of climate change. And I think that we should all take it serious because we are the next generation and we could make a change in the world. People may doubt us, but it's what we have the power to do anything like. What my dad again, he always said, have determination, determination and effort and nothing will be impossible. So yeah, just be aware and prepared. I like your words, Ariel. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ariel, for that, uh, that beautiful film. Uh, happening to us uh, had a, a unique opportunity to bring its filmmakers to the COP25 Climate Summit in Madrid uh, back in uh, December of 2019. Uh, the student filmmakers from Taktiaktak were able to show their film throughout the two-week conference, and it was a wonderful experience for everyone concerned. Um, so thanks again, Ariel. Uh, our next filmmaker is, um, is Carla uh, Sayas, and she's from Ecuador. Uh, she's a very enthusiastic environmentalist uh, in Ecuador, and she put together a wonderful film about her home country, showing the impacts of climate change and how they um, uh, impact both the rural and the urban communities throughout her country. So, so let's meet uh, Carla. Hey, my name is Carla. I'm 23 years old and I'm from Ecuador. The title of my film is Rural Economy and Climate Change in Ecuador. My experience at the film lab was incredible because I met great people, young people who are environmentally aware, who from their respective areas of knowledge, share and propose solutions to mitigate the effects of climate change in each of their communities. And also, I made great experts on the subject of climate, logistics and production, researchers specialized in economics, environmental impacts, migration, climate policies, and access to services in Latin America, sustainable development, agriculture, and other topics of interest for my documentary. It was an enriching experience because we not only had the opportunity to work with great professionals, but also to interact with them in more informal spaces and expand our vision of the changes that we can achieve as young people from our communities with daily actions. Mm, well, I think that the Youth Climate Report initiative has been and is very important not only to increase environmental awareness in society but it has allowed us to empower young people to build a better society then for many of us it may sound utopian but with projects like this we know that with daily actions from the smallest cities from our jobs from our countries from our homes we can make a change and the united nations with its funds projects, programs, and agencies has reached millions of people. It has a substantial impact on the world due to the initiatives it has proposed and lately with the Millennium Goals, we have all set in motion to meet them. But definitely, it is a challenge that requires commitment, not only from young people, but also from governments, from countries, Political will is key in achieving these objectives. And through these documentaries, we wanted to make a call to action because there is no time to waste. And I want to thank the Dadali Institute and the United Nations for allowing us to do so. Quiero felicitar además a mis compañeros del Planetary Health Film Lab por este reconocimiento que hemos alcanzado. Somos una generación que cree que debe existir un cambio. Planteamos un cambio de paradigma en el que la producción y la actividad humana no deje de lado al medio ambiente. Y creo que con nuestros films hemos hecho un gran trabajo. Congratulations, everyone. Stay safe. And thank you again for giving me the opportunity to share my experiences with you all. Climatic changes and increasing temperatures, changing weather patterns are affecting 
exactly the people that are the most vulnerable already. And the farmer, who are marginalized farmer, very poor, they don't have any government support. They actually depends on uh, uh, you know seasonal agricultural activities. That means they produce something and then they sell that, and the money they get again they invest that money for agriculture activities. So if there is any natural disaster because of the climate change, like uh, heavy rainfall or heat waves, that can actually destroy the whole uh, production systems. That means that farmer they are losing you know their asset. So it is very difficult for them to do agriculture again. Climatic changes, so changing weather patterns, changing environments, it's generating, exacerbating factors that already were the factors and reasons that people were leaving. The cascading effect, there is a cause and effect relationship yeah. of climate change for agricultural uh, production, poverty and health and education and everything. So what we're seeing is that more and more people are indeed moving from rural areas when they cannot sustain a living into urban areas. What happens though is that people that have been making a living related to, for instance, agriculture, that are moving into urban areas now, are often faced with a widespread level of insecurities, and partly because they don't have the, the skills in terms of labor to, to work with something else, they don't have the same networks and family connections, and they're just not used to the types of livings that they're faced with in urban areas. They realize that in order to find protection and assistance, they think that it's better to, to move elsewhere. But our uh, agriculture system is energy driven. I mean, energy is coming from like uh, fossil fuels or, or for uh, minerals. Fossil fuel is playing a huge role for carbon emission from agriculture sector too. 30% of carbon emission is coming from agricultural sectors. But uh, I mean, this is just the beginning. You know, we are we are just observing the negative impacts of the climate change on agricultural sector and how it is related with poverty. And now the policymakers, you know, the leaders, communities, the people, they are recognizing that yes, it it is making the poverty situation worse. What could be done in these locations in general to improve access to healthcare, access to education, and also to look at how can people get more integrated. And how can you can make it more um, adaptive, resilient, and also ecosystem based. Al margen, comunidades, las de resistencia, es la necesidad de amarse, de desearse, como serpientes que palpitan al ritmo de la rebelión, contra el gigante robótico sistema, emergimos las mamas de donde, uku pacha manda agua caman reina junchi, kai pacha pica, su magta causa junchi, ama manjechu, ama pin. A wonderful film and it was great to, to actually see both the, the urban and rural environments um, of, of Ecuador, it's such a beautiful country. Uh, I've been there myself several times because that's where my son lives with his family. And, uh, and to see how um, climate cha change is impacting it, your film was very powerful. So thanks again, Carla. Um, our next uh, set of filmmakers is actually a, a young couple uh, named Connor Fitzgerald and Emily Dix. And they have a very interesting project because um, they are theater empresarios and they put together a company called Bygone Theater, which um, trades on the themes of uh, stories from days gone by, but presented on stage through a, um, a more contemporary perspective. And, and what they did is they put together a film that showcases something very unique. They were able to incorporate all 17 of the sustainable development goals into their corporate mandate, right? So everything that they do, uh, has something to do with the SDGs, uh, either on stage or off. Uh, they're a, a dynamic young couple and I, I'm sure you'll uh, uh, enjoy meeting them. So uh, Connor and Emily, over to you.
Hi, I'm Emily Dix. And I'm Connor Fitzgerald. On behalf of Bygone Theatre, we would like to thank the UN for recognizing the Youth Climate Report and for giving us an opportunity to showcase our work. We're so happy the Youth Climate Report is getting this recognition because it's so important that youth get a chance to shape their climate future. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emily Dix, and I'm the Artistic Executive Director of Bygone Theatre. We specialize in presenting theatre from a bygone era, and unlike any other theatre company, we have incorporated all 17 of the Sustainable Development Goals into our company mandate. Here's how we did it. We care about the environment, which is why we prioritize using venues that use clean energy and water, limit our use of plastics, and reuse or recycle everything we can. Our president, Dr. Mark Terry, is a climate activist. We support his efforts in creating a healthier planet. To help our process, we have partnered with the Savers Fund Drive, collecting donations of used clothing and household goods to ensure they do not end up in a landfill. We use reusable water bottles and promote the same in our community. We know that these small steps will go a long way in protecting life on land and in the sea. I'm Connor Fitzgerald, Bygone Theatre's Chair. Bygone's blend of vintage aesthetic and modern values make it the perfect company to implement a sustainability strategy. I made sure that, as Chair, I brought this view to our governance. And we strive to be a leader in our city while supporting local businesses through patronage and marketing. Bygone has a diverse audience made up of people from all backgrounds, which is why we implemented ticket discounts and pay-what-you-can pricing to ensure everyone can enjoy the theatre. We accept food bank donations as payment for tickets and have implemented educational programs for high school students and theatre professionals to engage and develop our community. We are also a founding member of the TITC, which provides infrastructure and support to local artists. We have created a five-year plan that prioritizes providing living wages for artists, including profit sharing and professional development for our workers. As the AD of Bygone Theatre, I am in charge of choosing our productions. I prioritize shows with strong female leads and, as of 2020, have implemented a new diversity and accessibility mandate that sets concrete goals and measurable actions to ensure our company is representing our diverse community. We believe in vintage aesthetics, not vintage values. To promote health and safety on set, we have committed to hiring both fight and intimacy coordinators to ensure the physical and mental well-being of our performers. We are proud to have made sustainability one of the foundations of our mandate and are excited to share it with the world. We hope our commitment shows that even the smallest actors can have a big impact. Thank you to the UN and the SDG Action Campaign for motivating our actions. Okay, thank you, Connor and Emily. That was a, a wonderful film. I love how you put it together and, and the creativity that you used to uh, incorporate all 17 of the SDG goals into your corporate mandate. That, that was very, very uh, um, inspiring as well. And, as, and as, I, I, think, I think it's the only theater company in the world to, uh, to take this approach. So congratulations once again. Our next young filmmaker is Monica Monroy and she's from Colombia in South America. And um, she is also like Carla, a very, very passionate environmentalist in her home country. And she has created a film that shows um, something, a very specific area of Colombia, and that's the Subachoque River. A lot of people rely on this river in Colombia and she's showing how um, climate change and plastic pollution and, and other issues are affecting this river and in so doing, uh, impacting on the people that rely on the river as well. So um, I, I'd like you all now to meet Monica Monroy. Hello, good morning everyone. My name is Monica Monroy. I am Colombian. Uh, currently I study social communication and journalism at the Minuto de Dios University Corporation. I would like to start by thanking the SDG Action Award for rec recognizing the Joe Climate Report. My experience in the Planetary Health in Lab project uh, was huge enriching. I have the opportunity to learn from experience for people from different parts of the world, uh, which allowed me to uh, analyze uh, and understand whether environmental problems and climate change um, that afflict the whole world 
and that is necessary uh, to create the strategies that allow not only make this issue visible, but also from our capacities and knowledge to be able to con uh, contribute in creating possible solutions. I really enjoyed uh, this experience a lot. I am grateful that they allowed me, me to participate. My film shows the reality of some of the water sources in Colombia and how they have been affected due to the indiscriminate exploitation of team. Uh, I would uh, also like to add the importance of these initiatives for young people. Every time we see that young people care and want to act in the face of environmental problems. And it is important to create spaces such as the Planetary Health Film Lab use providing tools for our young people to fight together for the care and conservation of our ecosystems. También me gustaría hacer una invitación a todos los jóvenes, tanto de Latinoamérica como del mundo, para que participen en estas iniciativas, en estos proyectos que realmente enriquecen el conocimiento y nos ayudan a darnos cuenta de la importancia de proteger y resguardar nuestros recursos. Just to finish, I would like to congratulate the participants of this, uh, of this incredible project and their representatives. Uh, thank you for this excellent group. I hope to continue collaborating with these initiatives. Thank you again and so successful. This is the Subachoque River, a natural wonder which is located in the province of Cundinamarca, Colombia. It flows through the municipalities of El Rosal and Madrid, before joining the Bojacá River in Mosquera and which flows into the Bogotá River. This river caters to these municipalities of the savanna of Bogotá. But as it travels through the municipalities, we see how the hand of man is involved and not in a positive way. El río Subachoque tiene unas características especiales de contaminación. Eh, que son propias del de, de río y propias del de territorio donde nace. Eh, en la zona donde nace el río Subechoque hay eh, explotación agrícola y explotación ganadera. Eso hace que, por un lado, haya deforestación de sus, de sus laderas eh, para en los cultivos eh, que se están dando. Y por otro lado también hay deforestación por la misma razón, para poder eh, extender los potreros. Otra forma de contaminación y es que se viene desecando el río precisamente porque los campesinos y los moradores de sus riberas han venido canalizando el río y sacando aguas. Entonces eso hace que, que, que por la misma manera poco planificada e indiscriminada como se ha ido sacando el agua, el río se viene secando y contaminando. Garbage, polluting chemicals, flower companies that extract large amounts of water for irrigation and agriculture leave the river flow completely dry. But even more, we see the forestation around it to the point of leaving it almost completely dry. In recent years, an alert has been issued as the river flow has decreased in a serious way. This problem also affects its inhabitants since the contamination allows breeding of mosquitoes carrying dengue, a serious disease. Another consequence is water rationing since there is not enough for all populations. And showing up at special events that the United Nations hosts um, because it's important to remember that the young people are not only inheriting the problems that exist yeah. today, the older generation leaves those jobs. They're going to take over. And that's when we're going to see real change, I think, but maybe not before then.
Okay. Thank you, Monica, for that wonderful film. Um, I remember when you were working on it, uh, you were part of the Planetary Health Film Lab offered um, by York University in Toronto, Canada through the Dottolay Institute for Global Health Research. Uh, you and Carla, uh, the two representatives from South America worked together. And, um, and I remember um, how passionate you were about telling the story and it shows in your film. So thanks again. Um, our last young filmmaker I'd like to introduce you to is from Australia. And that's uh, Kai Milan. Uh, Kai Milan is a very, very um, passionate filmmaker. And uh, he cares an awful lot about his own country and, um, and the environment of Australia. And he's put together a wonderful film um, that, that you're going to, to see all the various things that happened uh, in Australia that might have hit headlines a few years ago, like the forest fires and the, and the dying coral reefs. Uh, he's going to be discussing all these issues um, in his film, which is called The Place I Call Home. And um, if I can just turn things over to Kai now. Uh, Kai, over to you. Firstly, a big thank you to the SDG Action Awards for recognizing the efforts and success of the Youth Climate Report. Being involved in the Youth Climate Report and Planetary Health Film Lab was an absolute honor. Not only did it allow me to share my story through film, it also allowed me to raise awareness about climate related issues in the place I call home. My GeoDoc was created on the love and passion that I have for our rich lands and nature here in Australia. Most important to me, our oceans, reefs and beaches. Whilst producing the documentary, I had the chance to interview some amazing people from very different walks of life. It was extraordinary to be able to share their stories and views on climate threats in our region. Being invited to the Planetary Health Film Lab allowed me to collaborate with young individuals from all around the world. The change in climate had affected them in many different ways and it was a big eye-opener to see the widespread effects of climate change and global warming. Workshopping with industry professionals helped to guide me through the post-production phase to create a documentary that clearly reflected my message. The program has inspired me to keep producing short films and now open my very own videography and event production company. The Youth Climate Report has allowed me to share my story, raise awareness for climate change in my local region, and develop key filmmaking skills so that I can continue creating documentaries and share other people's opinions and facts about the issues that we see in front of us. It's important for programs such as the Youth Climate Report to take place and inspire young storytellers to create and raise awareness around human-induced issues and protecting our planet. My name is Kai Millen, speaking to you from my home in far north Queensland. I hope you enjoy my film. A land of true beauty. From the blue ocean and the reef to the rainforest and the valleys. I live in paradise. But paradise doesn't last forever. We're at a time like no other in the history of man. We are faced with our own possible extinction, caused by ourselves. We've gone through uh, fires in the rainforest in Yungo, which is just, it's never happened before. We've had mass flood events, um, you know, you walk outside now and you can feel just how muggy and hot, just so temperatures are. It's open um, you, you can't dismiss something like that when a whole community burns down, a whole half the state burns, when you lose your house, you know, and it takes those sort of personal impacts to go, hey look, there's a, there's a bigger picture thing going on. When you've got pretty much every single ex fire chief telling you months and months in advance that this is what's going to happen and it's being driven by climate change and with global warming, the writing's on the wall. In the summer of 2019, 206 temperature records were broken in just 90 days. 12 million hectares of land has been burned, 25 people and an estimated 48 million animals in New South Wales alone have been killed. The 
Hollywood with Sunday Islands, the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef and home to the iconic Whitehaven Beach. A unique ecosystem which is suffering dramatically from the impact of human induced global warming. So we get a lot of coral bleaching um, and that is because the water temperature is changing so dramatically over such a short period of time. We're getting a lot more of it over summer when we're getting those uh, dramatic changes and shifting because of the wet season. Turtles starting to lay eggs on Whitehead Beach which isn't so common because the silica content is not changing temperature like other beaches. If you accept the science, um, accept that the you know, we're solution based rather than you know just pointing out the problems that um, you know we can we can have a future that's viable, that's long term, that's happy and healthy. This is my message to the United Nations and the Australian government. Change needs to be implemented now to reduce our carbon emissions and pollution, support the health and well-being of our communities and to protect the paradise that I call home before it's too late. All right, thank you, Kai. Thank you for that wonderful film. Um, he was so inspired, I should point out, by making this film that he actually created his own um, environmental production film company called Life Media. So congratulations on that too as well, Kai. So there you go. You've met the five filmmakers that made films uh, most recently for the Youth Climate Report. Um, as you can tell, they're all very enthusiastic about uh, not just filmmaking, but the way the planet is, is changing these days. And they, they want to do something about it and they are budding environmental activists. And they firmly believe in using uh, programs like the Youth Climate Report to tell their stories with uh, visuals. It's very important for policymakers to uh, see what these problems are, not just read about them in an academic paper. Uh, we have to remember that a lot of the policymakers are not scientists and they need communication tools like the Youth Climate Report to have a fuller understanding of the issues upon which they are building new policy. And uh, it's also very important that young people, um, like the people that you met today and all the participants of the Youth Climate Report can use uh, programs such as this to help turn it around and continue to, um, to be important voices um, in, in um, climate change activism because they are the ones that are going to be the policymakers of the future. So it's best that they get involved today and have a say at this time.